Good evening. My name is Joy Sims and I serve as the Healthy Communities Agent for Madison and Tinsall Parishes. Tonight I'm going to talk to you about food regulation um, as it pertains to the farmers market and this presentation wouldn't have been possible without the guidance from Ms. Sarah Sims and our partners at the Southern University Ag Center. So without further ado, let's get started. What exactly is cottage food or cottage food law? Cottage food products are low risk foods that are made in a home kitchen, but they can be a pathway for new entrepreneurs to start small scale food businesses from their homes as well. Most states have their own cottage food law and that allows specific cottage food products to be sold within that state. In Louisiana, the cottage food law allows home based food businesses to make and sell their products without a license which means less barriers to becoming a food entrepreneur in our state. Louisiana's cottage food law was started in 2013 and amended in 2014. Products allowed under the cottage food bill include breads, cakes, cookies, and pies, for which Louisiana imposes specific restrictions on, um, jellies and jams, preserves, candies, acidified foods like pickles, salsa, syrups, and spices. The Louisiana Cottage Food Bill has many stipulations, but they help micro entrepreneurs to form businesses without the additional overhead of renting a commercial kitchen. The stipulations of the bill are that all sales must be direct from the seller to the buyer. There is a sales limit of $20,000 per year. Operations may not have anyone else to help them make their products. So, for example, if you're making cakes and pies, um, you cannot employ anyone for assistance in the preparation of anything that requires refrigeration. Um, and of course, pets are never allowed in the part of the home where food is being made. Providing safe to eat food from your kitchen starts in your kitchen. When selling food, following safety guidelines can be a pillar of your reputation. The following are some things you can do to ensure the best environment for preparing foods to sell. You can keep all surface areas clean and sanitized, wiping down walls and cleaning floors daily. And you wanna make sure you use good lighting to avoid missing unclean areas. You wanna make sure windows and door screens are bug proof with no gaps. You wanna keep ingredients separate to prevent cross contamination. You want to wash your hands frequently while working and or use food grade gloves for extra safety. Um, of course, you don't want to allow anyone that presents a cold or any kind of illness in your kitchen while you're preparing foods. And of course, you want to watch out for pests. So no indication of rats, mice and roaches in the establishment in which this food is being made. All the equipment has, that, that you use must be maintained in a clean and sanitary condition. And all utensils, machines, racks, etc., must be cleaned and sanitized. Some more specific safety guidelines are that only pasteurized milk shall be used in food preparation, um, and all custard and cream filled mixtures shall be cooked to the minimum required temperature. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that here. So. Um, the reason that is, is the federal government uses acidity levels or pH levels to determine a food's safety for sales without refrigeration. The FDA rule for acidic food states that a food must have a pH below 4.6 to be sold as a minimally processed food. The reason for this is bacteria doesn't grow at this level of acidity. So essentially, the higher the acidity, the more stable at a range of temperatures that food product will be. For example, we just talked about dairy products. Milk is a low acidity product and it requires temperature controls. Um, the Louisiana cottage food laws give specific instructions to cottage food operators about refrigerating custard and cream filled cakes and pies, which implies that they are allowed, but they aren't allowed in other states. And these types of foods are considered potentially hazardous. Louisiana requires all at home processors to label their food items. However, they only require that the label have a statement 
that indicates that the food was not produced in a licensed or regulated facility, except in the case of raw honey. Um, for example, you may want to use a statement on your label that says this product was produced in a cottage kitchen and not a licensed or regulated facility. Cottage food operators and vendors will benefit from the advertising this does for them and it shows your customer you care. Um, you also want to make sure you list any allergens as a good business practice on your labels. The FDA lists eight major food allergens um, and, and labeling those would be considered a smart business practice and it will certainly improve the trust between you and your customers. So if you have any dairy, eggs, fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat and soy in your products, um, you definitely want to ensure you include that on your label. Um, labels are a great way to keep up with your product records, but your record keeping can go beyond your labels and it can be of great benefit to you as a home business owner. You want to keep track of the recipes you use, um, including your ingredients. You want to keep track of the process that you use to prepare that specific recipe. You want to keep track of the date that your product was made as a batch number as well as the date sold uh, simply so you can keep up with the batch that goes in and out. Um, you want to keep track of the location where your items were sold, as well as sales receipts, which are something that would be great to keep around for a number of reasons. Um, and there are many online resources that you can find to help you with best practices, systems, and methods for tracking, managing, selling, and shipping your products. So what do you as a business owner need to do to get started? First, you want to register your business and get a Louisiana General Sales Tax Certificate from the Louisiana Department of Revenue. You then want to check and see if there are any local uh, tax certificate that you can achieve from the local taxing authority of the jurisdiction in which you intend to sell. So basically the city or the parish in which you intend to sell, just make sure you don't uh, you have your tax information is uh, correct for that. Um, there is no food safety training or certificate required. Um, but knowing that the safe handling practices uh, are something that you are educated on will protect you and your customers. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. Uh, the food is semi limited to non temperature control for safety products only. Um, and this is standard across the country as all cottage food operations are limited to non potentially hazardous foods. Um, considering what we just talked about with the dairy products being potentially hazardous uh, with the acidity. Some foods can be sold for resale as well as uh, directly to customers and food labels are required. So be sure you have your labels ready to go. So because there is no food safety or certification training required, um, you're more than welcome to get started once you get your information in place, but Serve Safe is a very good and well recognized certification that can open doors for vendors operating from their home kitchen. Um, that Serve Safe certification means that you have sufficient knowledge about food safety uh, to earn one of their certificates. And um, it may improve, again, it may improve that trust from your potential uh, customers or your client base. So, Serve Safe is a certification that's a paid course and um, it teaches you the basics of food safety and handling. And this is offered online and can be found at www.servesafe.com. There are four certificates uh, that you can acquire. That'll be um, food manager, food handler, alcohol and allergens. And again, having that backup certification will just further improve your reputation in the community and in the market in which you choose to sell. Um, so take a look at that um, if that's something that you feel like you need or you're interested in. Um, cottage food operations uh, don't need a license from the Department of Health, um, but they must check with their parish to see if there are any zoning requirements applied or applicable to what they're uh, trying to do. Um, the operations don't need to collect state sales tax, but may need to collect local sales taxes. Um, and of course, that again depends on your city and parish. Um, and it is a very good idea to consider securing your business with liability insurance or a bond. 
Um, it can be expensive. And um, from what I've researched, bonds are maybe a little um, less than the liability insurance itself. However, in either case, um, having something like a liability insurance or a bond uh, would be a benefit to any homeowner or any home business owner um, that's interested in selling out of their home as an added buffer of protection uh, to them. So that's something that you want to consider. So now that you've got everything laid out, where exactly can you sell your products? Um, products can be sold directly to consumers in the state of Louisiana, including from the processor's home, uh, by pickup or delivery, a farmer's market, roadside stand, fairs, festivals, community events, online, and even at retail. Um, so you wanna make sure that as long as you have your labels and you followed your safety equipment and you've talked to the, the managers or the owners of the facilities in which you choose to sell, if it's outside of your home, you should be ready to go as a vendor. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna talk again about how to get started. So to get started, you wanna make sure you take a look at the list of non-potentially hazardous foods that are acceptable and build your sale list or your menu or however you want to call it. Um, you want to submit your online registration and sales tax certificate. You want to contact your city and parish about a business permit or license or, or local sales tax certificate for um, your business. And you want to review and follow food safety guidelines and regula regulations at all times. And once you have all of those steps in order, you're ready to start making money. I wanna thank you for listening this evening. Um, for additional questions, uh, please contact your local Ag Center. Uh, Ms. Sarah Sims and myself can be found at the LSU Southern University Ag Center located here in Tallulah, Louisiana. And uh, we can be reached by email or phone. So if you have any additional questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to reach out and let us know. Thank you again for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening. <laughs>